First questions about smart contracts. Ali asks, how are operations conducted without having middlemen, and who does them? Can you please give us some real ex uh, world examples, and when, which application is best for it? So, Ali, when a smart contract is executed, it is a software program, and every single participant in the smart contracts platform. Let's take, for example, Ethereum. Um, just because I know Ethereum a bit better than some of the other smart contract platforms, but the same kind of logic applies to all of them. Um, every single smart contract execution starts with a transaction. So someone makes a transaction, and that transaction um, has a contract as its recipient and tells that contract to do something. Basically, it's the input to a program. Smart contracts are just software after all. So what happens then? Who runs the smart contracts? Well, the simple answer is everyone runs the smart contract. Everyone takes everyone who's participating in the Ethereum network, everyone who's running an Ethereum node, everyone who's running a business that's running an Ethereum node, the nodes themselves, the Ethereum nodes, the clients, the computers that are running as part of the Ethereum network, will receive that transaction. In order to validate that transaction, they execute the smart contract, and they pass as input to the smart contract that transaction inside uh, what is known as a virtual machine. And a virtual machine is basically a simulated computer. So in Ethereum, that's the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM. And that simulated computer takes the transaction that was the input to the smart contract. It takes the transaction contract code, sorry, the contract code that is recorded on the blockchain, and it runs that as a software program with that input. Now, if all goes well, and that transaction should run successfully and produce some change in the state of the system, meaning that a variable is updated, maybe a payment is sent, uh, maybe some money is deposited, maybe something changes ownership, maybe, again, part of the memory or data store of the contract itself is updated with new values. These state changes are then recorded on the blockchain. Now, if you imagine thousands of computers all running the same software, they're not running it at the same time, there might be some slight differences in time, they're each running it locally on their own machine, and they're each using as input the same transaction, the same blockchain. Now, Given all of that, they should all arrive at the same conclusion. They should all run the program identically and produce the exact same results. Those results are what's recorded on the blockchain, those state transitions. So all the blockchain in a smart contract platform, we record the transaction as well as the um, all of the results of the transaction, which may include events and changes to the state of the blockchain. Everybody can validate that they got the same result as everybody else. And when they download a new confirmed block from the Ethereum network, they can validate that block by running all of the transactions and smart contracts and seeing if they agree with the results that the miner has included in there. If they don't agree, then they will consider that block invalid and reject it. So therefore, just like in other blockchains, like in Bitcoin, everybody validates. Everybody who is participating as a node on the network validates every transaction. And in the case of Ethereum, to validate a transaction, that may mean, in most cases, means running the smart contract and arriving at the same results as anybody else. There are no middlemen that are running this. Um, this is done in a decentralized way. Now, all of that refers to um, the execution of a smart contract that uses information from within the blockchain. Now, when it's running in the EVM, it has a very limited set of information it can act on, and that's because all of that information has to be part of the consensus rules. It has to be the same for everybody who's trying to run that contract, so that they can all validate it the same. That means that smart contracts are very limited in how much information they can access meaning that they can't access information about the real world. They can't say, what is the temperature today in Pensacola? That's not on the Ethereum blockchain. They can't say, what is the price of Ether today? Um, or something like that. And so, as a result, um, there are external services that sometimes supplement smart contracts, and these are called oracles. Which leads us great, straight into the next question by DDA. 
How can we make sure that an oracle feeding information to a smart contract is not corrupt? That's a great question, Didier. In fact, that's the biggest challenge with the technology of oracles. So you have this compromise situation whereby smart contracts can only act authoritatively and within the consensus rules on the information that's already stored in the Ethereum blockchain and the transaction they just received. And they can't validate the truth of anything that's in the transaction. Um, they can't validate what's happening in the real world. For that, we sometimes use external services called oracles. But the problem with that is if you trust that oracle, uh, that oracle has enormous power. Let's say, for example, that you had um, an insurance company, and that insurance company um, has a clause that says, if it rains more than 30 inches, um, in this particular region, that will trigger a claim on an insurance over property, so to cover rain damage. And so that smart contract in there has to constantly check how many inches of rain have fallen in a specific area. Now you can use an oracle for that. You can use an oracle that publishes every minute or every hour the cumulative amount of rain for the past 24 hours. And that if it exceeds a certain threshold, then you could trigger. Um, an insurance payout. Here's the problem. Now you've centralized a lot of the control and power into this oracle. So where is this oracle running? In most cases, this oracle ru is running outside of the Ethereum network. Or if part of it is running inside as a smart contract, certainly the information about how much rain fell in the last 24 hours is coming from outside, and that source has to be trusted. There's a couple of ways to do to get around this problem. One of the ways uh, is to use a certain type of oracle, where instead of asking one source for the data, like how much it rained in a specific area, you have a decentralized mechanism whereby the oracle collects information from thousands of sources, and they must all agree. Effectively, you're running consensus rules, um, on perhaps a, an external blockchain, a sidechain, or another blockchain that is used uh, in order to arrive at a common truth. So at that point, if everybody out of a thousand people who are running um, rain sensors in Pensacola, Florida, and they all report within the range of 28 to 30 inches of rain, then you can say, okay, that information is more decentralized and we can trust it. Why does this matter? Well, part of the reason it matters is because smart contracts execute automatically. And when they execute automatically, they also execute uh, in a way that cannot be reversed. So imagine a situation whereby you have um, an insurance contract and it's going to pay out. If you hack the oracle and make it report the wrong amount of rain, exaggerating the amount of rain, and you trigger the insurance company to pay out all of these uh, claims, then you can effectively defraud the insurance company. And therefore, smart contracts only operate on whatever information they have. If you put garbage in, you get garbage out. And one of the challenges with interacting with the real world is how do you know that information is correct, and how much trust are you putting into a single provider? If you centralize trust, then that creates an enormous incentive for people to um, basically compromise that centralized system because they could receive billions of dollars, presumably, um, in insurance payouts. Arguably, no one's going to do that anytime soon. No one is going to write a smart contract that will automatically pay out billions in the case of uh, an event coming from an oracle. And, and this is where the real world of smart contracts uh, really where the rubber hits the road, if you like, because um, it's exactly these challenges that, that mean that we're very, very far away from many of the alternative uses of the blockchain that people discuss today, um, simply because you, you can't put that much dependence on a fully automated system, especially if it has a centralized part of trust.